Hello and welcome to our special coverage here from the B20 Summit in the capital. I'm Shireen Bhan and it is my pleasure to welcome on the program the global CEO of Adobe, Shantanu Narayan. Shantanu, always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us here in India. Uh, you know, what a week it's been. We've landed on the moon quite literally. We've had an 18-year-old chess prodigy almost make it, but a long distance to go. Uh, global CEOs and trade ministers gathered here at the B20. What's the big message that you take away from the summit so far? Well, clearly the future is bright, Shireen, but a highlight for me is always being on your show. So thank <laughs> you for having have me. you back. Uh, it's, I think the excitement is just palpable. Uh, and for us, I think we always look at it from digital and AI. That's the panel that I was on. And, you know, the amazing advancements that technology has done uh, to, you know, spur the economy. Everything from investment in payment schemes to a digital infrastructure to mobile devices. And, you know, we're biased, but we think that technology is uh, in many ways such an enabler uh, for societal improvement. And so I think, you know, I have been actually struck by how much in each of the groups, when they talked about the B20 groups, how much they emphasize the importance of technology. That was really nice to no, see. No, and I will talk about technology in a second, but uh, let me dive down into India and Adobe's plans for India. I mean, you've been a long-term committed investor. What, 25 years now in India? You've just That's opened right. a new facility in Bangalore. Take me through where, where plans specifically for Adobe are in light of the many changes that you're seeing and the opportunities, more importantly, that you're focusing on. Well, we've been extremely excited always about, you know, the incredible talent that exists in this country. And so when I used to come here, it was always about talent and how do we attract and retain talent. Uh, I think there are two things that have changed, uh, I think, in the economy that are equally exciting for us. The opportunity to enable businesses, their digital transformation. As you know, we have a business that targets the chief revenue officer, the chief digital officer, yeah. the chief marketing officer. And, you know, companies like Air India or financial services institutions like ICICI or HDFC mm. or retail institutions, I think the way they are using technology to engage with customers, so the business opportunity associated with Adobe in India has also exploded. Mm. So it's not just about what we can develop here, but it's also about selling. And I would say the third part that actually has been exciting is we've built some fundamental technology mm. platforms uh, we have one called the Adobe Experience Platform right. that allows people to store their profiles and then people can engage with customers or support these customers or do commerce with the customers. So I think the startup ecosystem mm. and how we can also engage with the startup ecosystem uh, to build solutions on top of Adobe. So, uh, you know, it's no longer a one-trick pony. There's so many uh, facets of the growth here. No, it's certainly not a one-trick pony. So let me pick up on the market opportunities that you spoke of. And given the fact that this is today uh, the fastest, one of the fastest large uh, economies in the world, uh, what could that mean in terms of revenue potential? I mean, how much do you think India is going to be able to contribute to revenue for Adobe globally over the next few years? Well, when we think about Adobe uh, in uh, totality, we have over a hundred billion dollar addressable market opportunity. And certainly, you know, the business in India today is not uh, mm -hmm. where we want it to be, but the growth is tremendous. And so when we think about the growth opportunity, we don't break up by country, you know, because... I, I uh, know, but I was still trying to get a flavor of what it could potentially mean. Uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't be in the billions of dollars over time. I mean, when you look at the... Uh, economy, when you look at the businesses, you know, I was uh, talking to Bajaj Financial Services mm -hmm. and you look at the growth that they're having. So, I mean, uh, you know, for all of these Indian companies, the world is their oyster. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a multi-billion dollar digital marketing business. So there's no reason why India shouldn't be one of the major uh, regions for that. Let's now talk about technology and, you know, it, the, the themes here continue to be around the digital transition that we're seeing, how India is poised within that, and of course, what AI is potentially going to do. Yep. Now, how do you see AI? There is plenty of euphoria. There's also the call for guardrails to be put in place. Where are we in that transformative phase of AI as of today? If you think about the amount of attention globally, that the entire computer industry is placing on AI. That's why I think you're seeing these transformative leaps. And I've been in this business for a long time. 
I really haven't seen the kind of progress in any other field like I'm seeing in AI. Uh, for us, uh, it first starts with creativity. You know, people fear the blank screen. Mm. When you want to create a movie production or when you want to write a report. And so I think the ability for AI to enable this creative expression mm. to really explore, because every K through 12 student or the largest enterprise in the world has ideas. And if we can help them bring those ideas to life with mm. AI, because generative AI in particular, yeah. which yeah. is all the buzz, really enables you to start to describe what you want to create. Mm. And the computer takes care of it for you. And you know, we've always been about how do we make the task at hand you know, get more and more invisible so you can focus on the output. So I think generative AI and creativity, when you actually look at the traffic for this new product that we created called Firefly, Firefly yeah. the traffic in India is tremendous. And I think it just represents the innate interest. You know, whether you're a K through 12 student or whether you're one of these largest mm. SI companies, you're doing content automation, content production, mm. content localization, content personalization. And so I think the reduction of a lot of these mundane tasks is going to change. Mm. And you know, I think creative is going to be both at the front end of that mm. process, allow that creative expression to really explode, and at the back end of that process, mm. which is the automation and the production mm. and the distribution and the personalization to really happen. So from a business opportunity, uh, we think it's great. Uh, we think it's incredibly uh, exciting. You know, you talked about Firefly, and that is your sort of answer uh, to this generative AI space that we are currently talking about. But what about monetization? And and how long before we actually start to see it delivering on its true monetization potential? When we think about AI, uh, and when we think about Adobe in aggregate, we've always said, how do we get more people to our platform? And you know, it's not just about the creative professionals at the top of the pyramid, it's the halo effect of that with communicators and then with consumers. Uh, so we've always been a company uh, when you think about PDF and the number of people who use it. So the way we would talk about monetizing it, first, we are going to have with Firefly as well as with Adobe Express, mm. which just recently launched, it's a brand new version of people using a web-based browser to create content. We will have a freemium model. So you can come in, you can yeah. trial it out, you can perhaps use a certain number of generations. Mm. And then for all of the products that we have, I mean, I think what's really taken the world by storm is this feature called generative fill in Photoshop. Mm where within a Photoshop composition, you can suddenly say, I just want to change a layer within Photoshop. So I think the value for our creative professionals, mm. both in terms of enabling more people to the platform as well as retention, mm. because now they're getting more value for it. And then I think credit packs. And what we mean by credit packs is the ability for people to say, as I want to use more and more generations, yeah. I'm going to uh, you know, be willing to pay for it. So I think we have a multi-faceted uh, mm. approach for monetization, but right now the excitement is about getting people to the platform, yeah. building the absolutely best foundation models. Adobe decided we have to have our imaging model, we will have our vector model, we will have our video model, and then the interfaces, which mm. is what individuals like you and me use yeah. to create this, how do we embed it in that? You know, as we talk about the excitement and as we talk about this next wave of transformation, how critical is size going to be? There is, of course, capability and that's a big part of it, but how critical is size going to be? You're uh, in the process of finishing off, of course, basis uh, pending regulatory approvals, uh, your largest acquisition at $20 billion, and you're no stranger to acquisitions, but how important is in organic growth going to be, and size? Well, I think, you know, uh, first, going back to the AI, uh, an absolutely important part of AI is data, right? And how do you have data? Because at the end of the day, the AI is only good as the training. Mm. And so size is important in that, when we have tens of millions of people using our product or billions of assets being created, that is input into our technology and you know the self-reinforcing loop to make our products better. Size is important there. I think in terms of, uh, you talked about talent earlier, I think it's going to be less now about numbers of people mm. because the skill set is different. You know, from getting computer science folks who are writing programs to model builders. Yeah. So I think you're going to see a shift in India 
where the skill set has to change from people you know, uh, having computer science background exclusively to having computer science as well as AI model building capabilities. Mm. And I think in terms of distribution, which is the third aspect of size, mm. right? I mean, certainly we get credibility uh, in enterprises because we use our own technology. Uh, you know, we eat our own dog food or sip your own champagne, whatever term that you want. But I think in that aspect, you know, the credibility that we get from saying, if we are using that data when we do Adobe Digital mm. Index, to get that insight available and commoditized and democratized, I think that is an opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked about startups and wanting to collaborate uh, with startups here in India, and, and that potentially being an opportunity that you would look at. What's exciting in that space for you specifically? Is there anything that you're looking at today? Well, you know, we're looking at it more in terms of how do they build products on our platforms. And I'll, I'll give you two examples. First, Firefly. You know, uh, with Firefly, we're going to have custom models. If you're CNBC or if you're Disney or if you're Coke, mm. you want to make sure that all of the assets that you have, you know, whether it was all the movies that you've produced or all the content that you've created, is exclusively for your use. And so I think in terms of, you know, how we are thinking about using these models, we have these custom models for companies such as yourself. Mm. Uh, in terms of the startups, they are then going to use these as APIs mm. to embed. Maybe there's a medical imaging application that needs the ability to generate images. Maybe there's a automation of inefficient paper-based processes. Mm. So I think the startups are less about are we looking to acquire right mm. now, and are we looking instead to you know ensure that we have more distribution of our technology. You know, while there's plenty of excitement around the many changes that we're seeing in technology, we're also dealing with global headwinds. Uh, the global economy continues to be fairly uncertain. Of course, the Indian economy is doing far better in comparison. But how would you read that into decision making when it comes to spending, especially, uh, you know, on, on things like technology? Because we've gone through that phase of in January, everything looked great. And then we a quarter later, not so much. And it seems to have sort of uh, moved back into a con some sort of a confidence uh, uh, zone at this point in time. You know, I, I always say, A, I'm not an economist, so I don't try and predict the future. I rather plan for the upside and react to the downside. But if you look at the sentiment in the U.S., actually, you know, sort of the doom and gloom scenario uh, economists are, I think, less in vogue right now. Mm. And I think people feel like the consumer resilience, the confidence that exists, I think is going to drive it. Irrespective of what happens in the economy, the reality is that digital is going to be an infrastructure. So, yes, we may have some business cycles, but uh, these kinds of technology uh, transformations or tectonic shifts are only going to be uh, significant tailwinds and not headwinds. You know, speaking of the regulatory architecture that everyone's talking about, what's your thought on what needs to be regulated, how it should be regulated, and who should regulate it? It's, it's a great question, and it's one that we as a public and private uh, cooperation have to figure out. The first thing I will tell you is that this is moving so fast that if we prematurely regulate it, it can actually impact the competitiveness of countries. Mm. It certainly can impact the competitiveness of uh, you know, businesses. And so I believe that from the Adobe perspective, we look at it and say, are we ensuring that one of our core purposes, which is technology to transform, are we thinking about the unintended consequences mm -hmm. and how are we in a responsible way dealing with them? The content authenticity initiative yeah. that we have is a great example of that. We have hundreds of uh, companies that have nice signed up to say, when you create a piece of content, yeah. let's make sure that we have content credentials. And that's going to be even more critical in an AI world. It's absolutely, because then you want to know, was that generated by a human? Was that generated by a machine? But I feel like premature regulation right now can only impede progress. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's incumbent to have an open conversation. You know, some of the conversations that happened in the US was like, let's create a moratorium. And mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of that. Because and what purpose would a moratorium it, it, serve? I mean, a six-month moratorium won't really do very much, will it? You're absolutely right. And it's not like everybody is going to listen to that moratorium. So if you're a company or if you're a country that's ahead, you want to you know, further advance uh, your uh, priorities. So I don't think a moratorium will uh, do it. 
I think even when people talk about social, mm. you know, which is the thing that they all point to in terms yeah. of here is why we need regulation, let's not underestimate also, you know, all the massive benefits that social has brought to society. So I, I think uh, industry will act in a responsible way. Uh, I would be apprehensive about each country creating a different form of regulation because then that will prevent mm. uh, you know sort of the global societal improvements that can happen with AI yeah. but I think at the end of the day we have to self-regulate and speaking for myself at Adobe we're very comfortable with that. Is that a fear though that we are now going to see countries take a position as far as regulating AI is concerned? We've seen it with data and data protection and privacy laws and what could that then mean as far as industry and business is concerned? Well, when they've happened, first we've adhered to them, right? I think the big one that everybody talks about is, you know, GDPR. Right. And when GDPR came about, how do you make sure? The way we think about it is, are you being completely transparent with a customer about what data you're collecting? Are you ensuring that it's saved and stored in a secure way? Mm -hmm. And are you being transparent of how you would use that data? And I think those are core principles that continue to drive us as a company. Mm. And I think it's you know core principles like that, that people, if they can agree to, that will probably further the industry quicker than trying to have regulation that everybody's trying to interpret. You know, Shantanu, speaking of core principles, I want to talk to you and get you to look at the rear view mirror. Uh, you know, what a phenomenal innings it's been for you, 15 years at the helm of Adobe, 25 years altogether. What have been the big takeaways? You know, if, if, you're, if there are young entrepreneurs watching, founders watching, CEOs watching, what have been the big lessons, the realizations that you've learned uh, as CEO over the last 15 years? Well, Shireen, first, it's been the journey of a lifetime. Uh, and as you know, unfortunately, we lost one of our co-founders earlier this week. Uh, and, you know, the privilege to have worked with Adobe, which has transformed forms of written communication as we know it in the world, uh, you know, has been uh, an absolute blessing for me. I, I think, you know, people do their best work when they resonate with the mission of a company and they like the values of the company. And I'm a kid in a candy store when I see technology. Still, I am. 25 years I am, on. I am. And I don't know what else I would do. So I, I love building products. I love seeing the impact that people have. And I love working with people. I get my energy from people. The pandemic was probably the hardest part for me because you know, you're not with people in a room brainstorming. And so I think the message, if there is one, is do something that you love and then it doesn't feel like a job. Yeah, but still, you know, to, to have the enthusiasm, the curiosity, the passion, the perseverance, and, and to put that into work every day. I get that question a lot because I've been here 23 years as well, but I, and I, I'm really trying to understand how it works for different people. So, you know, it, what, what is it that keeps you going? Is there, is there a regimen? Uh, you know, is there a mantra? How, how does it work for you? I should ask you that question. You're the expert on this, uh, Shireen. On, a, on another show. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I would just say I, I love what I do. You know, and I, I like building products. And hopefully I've demonstrated uh, that I have uh, the ability to try and understand how products can have impact. Uh, as you know, I wanted to be a journalist. And so vicariously, I'm still in the journalism you industry. Are. You are. And I'm helping, you know, uh, the world communicate. But yes, you're certainly helping with storytelling. Yes. I think it's working with people. If there's a joy that I really get, it's working with people. You know, you talked about the, the fact that you're seeing such a fast pace of change and you, this is something that you haven't seen before uh, in the 25 years that you've been in the tech industry. What's also changed in terms of leadership? I mean, you know, you've got a situation in your backyard where we almost had a, had a caged fight which didn't come to. <laughs> what are you seeing in terms of changes in leadership styles and, and who's driving technology at this point in time and what's driving the aspiration at this point? I think leadership is changing. I've always said there are two things that leaders have to do. You have to help plant the flag and if you have to help build the rope. Uh, but I think this notion of servant leadership where it's sort of the inverted pyramid and how do you really capitalize on the ingenuity and innovation of people because people have choices and I think the pandemic reflected that even more. So I think most people are recognizing that leadership is about channeling, maybe it's about guiding, 
and it's less about you know dictating and i think that's one of the things that at adobe we've always tried to do which is great ideas come from everywhere how do you channel those great ideas um i think leadership's also about making decisions and at times you have to make tough decisions that people don't want and maybe that's something i've just got comfortable with uh, i'm not always going to be right and so being comfortable with the fact that you're going to make wrong decisions but then you move on and you wake up uh, you know I, i think those are the two things i've learned so what's the the big idea of 2023 that is still playing in your mind or something that you've already acted upon i think we're so early with ai i think you'll see us you know uh have ai embedded in our products for the next 6 months uh, i was in the noido office earlier this week and i saw some of the amazing things that are working on so i think the world's going to be amazed by this i think you know we tend to say it's over before it started and so i think we're just getting started with ai shantan narayan always a pleasure thank you so much for joining us here on scene bc tv 18 it's been an absolute pleasure listening to your journey but more importantly uh, understanding what the road ahead looks like thanks very much for your time thanks for having me as always well with that it is time for us to take a break here on our scene bc tv 18 conversations from the b20 summit we're back in a moment with more don't go anywhere right back with you <laughs>